This will be an introduction to working with racket lists, both accessors and constructors. So the accessors that we're going to use are first and rest. First, what it does is here's a list and it takes the first element and it returns that first element. So it first returns the first thing in the list. Rest, what it's going to do is it'll return everything but the first element. So here, everything but spam. Rest returns everything but the first thing in the list. So here it returns it. The list is awesome. Here's an example with just a single element list. It'll still just return spam, which is the first element in that list. And rest will return the empty list because it will return everything but the first thing. So everything but the first thing, which is spam, is just the empty list. So here's a quiz question to try on your own. The answer is A. So what we'll do is we'll take the rest of this list, which removes the first, and then we take the first of the list that's remaining, and that will return 42. We can produce some errors with first and rest. If we try and call first on an empty list, this will return an error because there's no first in an empty list. Similarly, rest tries to remove the first element and return everything in the list but that first element. Again, since there's no first element, rest on an empty list will have it cause an error. First and rest are always expect to receive a list as an input. And so calling first and rest on 42 will also produce an error. So the answer here is E. All of the above will create errors. And again, as a reminder, first and rest must be called on the list with at least one element. So how do you make sure that a list has at least one element? You can use the function null. So null called on an empty list. This here is an empty list. We'll return pound t or true. Null that's called on a list that has an element inside of it will return pound f or false. Similarly, if null is called on something other than a list, it'll return false. So again, null returns pound t if the argument is a list with zero elements. Now we'll move on to bracket list creator. So how do we make these lists? Before we've just used quote open paren to create lists, but we can actually call functions to create lists. In here, I'm going to be using images from the book Simply Scheme, which is at the link there, and from CS Illustrated, some resources made at UC Berkeley. So a list is going to take any number of arguments and put them into a list. So here's the CS Illustrated animation. So it takes two lists, and it's going to add them both to a single list. An example call, it's called with two arguments, the list 1, 2, 3, and the list 4, 5, 6. So in the end, our list has two elements, each of which has three elements in it. Our next example shows that you can put things like numbers, lists, pound t, and pound f. What happens for each of these is they get evaluated. So the plus gets evaluated, which is this procedure, and each of those gets placed in the list. We can also append two lists, which takes two lists and turns them into one. And both arguments must be lists. This is really important. Here's the CS Illustrated example. So we take the elements in these two lists, and we can join them, and then we get just one list left over. Here's an example where I'm taking the same two lists, the list 1, 2, 3, and the list 4, 5, 6. And what I get left over is a single list with six elements. Here, this one is very similar to the example above, except I have an extra set of parentheses. So this first list that I'm appending is a list that has one element in it, and that element is the list 1, 2, 3. And I'm appending these two, and what it'll do is it'll take and merge these two parentheses. It'll remove these two parentheses so as to join the list. It's not actually what's happening inside of Racket, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Here are some examples to look at of how a pen takes the two parentheses between the two lists and removes those parentheses so as to join those two lists. So here are some interesting examples you should look through. A, the really primary constructor of lists is actually something called cons. Cons takes two arguments, and if the second argument is 
a list, it makes the first argument the first of a new list and makes the second argument the rest of the new list. So here we can see how it takes this first argument and puts it in as the first of the new list. From our example, again, it takes the first argument and it makes that the first of the new list. And whatever this second argument is will be the rest of the new list. And again, the rest is always just the list with the first removed. Here's another example where instead of putting in the number one, I'm putting in the list one. But it won't get merged into a single flat list. Here, the first argument to cons will be the first element in the new list. And if we remove this first element, we would get back the second argument, which is the list 2, 3. Here are a few more examples of cons. And these blue arrows show where it squeezes in, essentially, that first element. Here's a question. Can you produce the list 1, 2, 3, 4 using only cons and the empty list and 1, 2, 3, and 4? You should pause the video to think about this, but I can. What I can do is I can say cons of 4 and the empty list. And what this gives me is this gives me the list 4. So the list with one element in it, which is 4. To the front of that, I can also cons 3. What that does is I call cons 3 onto this list with 4. It'll come and put it as the first in that list. And the list with the element 4 in it will be the rest of that list. So from this, I'm going to get 3, 4. <clears throat> so to get the full answer, I can do cons 1 to cons of 2 to cons of 3 to cons of 4 and the empty list. And in each case, what cons will do will is it will take the first argument and make it the first of a list, and the second argument and make it the rest of the list. So the answer here is yes.